on EA Sports. In today's matchup, the passing game will be a focus. The Colts are top 10 in forcing interceptions, and they'll be up against the Texans, who will be testing that coverage. So for the call of this week's 17 matchup, let's send it out to our broadcast team, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. We welcome you to the heart of the Hoosier State in the Circle City of Indianapolis, Indiana at Lucas Oil Stadium. Today, the curtain falls on the regular season, and we've got a good one in store between the Houston Texans and the Indianapolis Colts. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we take a look at the Colts entering play. They've been playing their best football of the year, winners of four in a row. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Texans, they come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. And going back through the tape, I thought they looked pretty good last week. It was a solid win, a comprehensive win. Here we go. The final week of the NFL season. Week 17 is underway. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And last year, that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year, he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee, and that's at the 25. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And out will come the leader of this offense, and that, of course, is their signal caller. They'll come out in the pistol. Let's go! And he'll give it here to his running back. And this defense feeling the encouragement. They stop him at the line of scrimmage on the first play of the afternoon. Holding offense. So a little grabbing there, but this time Still it goes against the offense for holding. They'll wind up losing a full 10 yards on the play. All right, here we go. Three. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He's got time in the pocket. And incomplete to open things up. Offensive starters here. Wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, a talented, talented wide receiver. And he's still looking for that ultimate recognition. He wants to be mentioned with the best receivers in the game. His numbers suggest that we should do so. On fourth down, here's Lachlan Edwards to punt it. Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. So the Colts now coming out for their opening drive. And they'll be led out by their quarterback, the very, very talented Andrew Luck. And Andrew Luck's skill set is absolutely fantastic. There's not anything that he can't do as a quarterback on the field. But I also think that he absorbed a little bit by osmosis. Some of that great bloodline, his father, formerly a quarterback in the NFL as well. And to give this time to the tailback. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. And the offense on the field for the first time today, and they were high-powered a week ago. And they're beginning to believe that they've established a groove. They expect those type of performances each and every week. Running it, throwing it, they're precise. They'll give it to him right up the gun. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. And a look now at the defense for Houston. Jadeveon Clowney was the number one pick in the NFL draft, and it was with good reason. An absolute athletic freak. Now he's trying to add consistency to his game. Offense coming up, needing two yards on third down. Third and two, Luck. And he's got his man on the out route. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Oftentimes we think of those tough yards as grinding yards and a running back has to pick up. How about the tight end there picking up the first down in that situation? That's what he's there for, right? 
big fella, get it to him, let him fight off some people and pick up the necessary yardage. They go play action here on first down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. As if he didn't have enough to think about on that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, decided to make sure he toe-tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with a sideline since you, you've got better vision of it. I think that's a great point because you should know exactly where you're going and know how much space you have and make sure you get your feet down. But yeah, coming back to the football, I like it. Good vision. As far as I'm concerned, Andrew Luck can do it all. I mean, he's an underrated runner, toughness in the pocket, strong and stout. But let's face it, the money... That comes from his arm. And smart, valedictorian of his high school class in Houston that he goes to Stanford. He's got it all. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. All right, I'm doing my rudimentary math here. That's his third catch here in the first quarter. I don't know if it's just game plan or he's just finding his way open. And maybe a little of both. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Their big tight end. His first touchdown on the year. And the Colts are going to take a first quarter lead. So they go play action. Three tight ends out there in the heavy set. Well, they showed everything that suggested running play. Just what you mentioned, three tight ends, heavy formation, able to go play act. So this offense will head back out there. They're in excellent field position after the fumble recovery. Now a handoff here to his running back. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Surveying the field. And he's got Rodgers. And they do get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. A shotgun snap for Love. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Their big tight end. Hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Colts add on to their lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fits. yard line as this offense gets set to take over. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll fight forward to about the 27 yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. 
And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be third and ten. And that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize it is broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball. punt this offense will start with tough field position inside the 10. Now a play fake here on first down toward the sideline and look at that catch dragging the toes and that's going to be a first down well done. All right, say it with me now. There are a lot of different words we come up with. Maybe we go back and forth after that play, getting his toes tapped down to make that catch. Crafty. Yep. Wiley. Oh, definitely. All the veteran names. You name it. Has every move in the book and continued to get better throughout his career so he can make the touchdown Indianapolis. A great effort there. 81 yards. And the cold strike quickly here six points and with his speed if he just finds the slightest crease he can take it the distance like he did there how about the leverage up front offensive line out leveraging the defensive front to create that space that crease that he was looking for and once he hits open field he's going to be very difficult to catch and corral25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. On first down, it's Love. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 13 yards there on the pickup. And the Colts are going to have a first. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And the two-minute warning lurking. This will probably be the last play before we hit her. Yeah, they want to get themselves in position to score in this last shot before the clock hits. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Two minutes to play here in the first half. We'll come back to Indianapolis right after this. A reminder that coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Larry Ridley in Orlando with highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And I'm going to check in with a heater. I'm going to be right there with you, partner. From the 50, it's long. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And a nice gain of 21 yards. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. 
And he's certainly not a guy that drops that football very often. Indeed, because that's a bit of a surprise. I know he's in the middle of some traffic and people, bodies all around him, but he usually has the focus to haul that one in. Back to the air, Luck on second down. Throw left side is complete to Rodgers. That catch good for five, it's third down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route, and what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. He's got time. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. So now on fourth down, Chuck Pagano turns to the field goal unit here. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it in the end zone. Start of this next possession. The score, seven nothing. Off of play action, Luck over the middle. It's caught by Rodgers, and it'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. They'll fake the handoff now. Luck finding time, and that's going to be incomplete. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure, threw it incomplete. Now it's Locke off the bootleg. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. Play action. It's locked. This is caught inside the 15. Give them 35 yards there on the third down conversion. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And Hopkins' kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. This offense ready to get back out there as they'll have the football to start the third quarter. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. Now a play fake, and it's locked. Trying to lay one up deep. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Their big body receiver with touchdown number 20 of the year and the Colts are able to grow their lead. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. That's almost like... yard line as this offense gets set to take over. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. 
Call it a three-yard gain, and that'll make this a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. They go play action here on first down. He's going to air one out. And that's caught inside the 30. They give him a gain of 38. Well, it's obvious to me that the big guy is beyond locked in. We saw last week a scintillating performance. We're seeing it again. I think he and his coordinator are in lockstep right now. Sometimes a tip of the cap to the guys calling the plays here, yeah? Not just calling the plays, setting the game plan, sitting with him during the week, watching tape as they formulate it. You know, the best ones, they listen to their guy and say, okay, what do you like this week? You like this play, you don't like that play? And that helps them formulate what they're going to do. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Quarterbacks like throwing the slant route, but they have to be careful about ball placement. They have to put it in a spot that makes sure the receiver has his body in front of the defender. To throw is long. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to swing the tight end free downfield for the completion. And here comes play number six on this drive. Block throwing again. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver. Touchdown number 15 of the year. And the Colts add on to their so on third and medium, they dial up the pass, and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what often... the start of this next possession. The score, 7-0. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And there's a nice stop for the defense. They've had a tough time containing this guy all game long, but maybe they can build a little bit off of that play, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum. Yeah, every now and then you can actually tackle that guy. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first-level run, and it was stopped by a second-level player. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here. With that type of a lead, clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. And they'll run it here. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play there. Second down. And that's one of the few times they've been able to contain him. He's had a heck of a game, and maybe he's getting a little bit tired from how many times he's carried the ball. But I always think back to what all those old coaches say. The ball's not that heavy. Keep carrying it, kid. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. 
So, Brandon, when this offense gathers together to watch tape for this game, they're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves until the coaches get upset about the play we just saw. But you know their defense is going to be. But we put up big points all game long. The defense is going to win one every now and then. Throw left side is complete to Rodgers. 12 yards there as they move the chains. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish. The strategy would tell you, run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. Well, go ahead and throw the ball, man. You got the big lead. You got the clock on your side. Obviously, they don't care much about the feelings of the other team, do they? Well, I was going to say, you better run to the locker room pretty quick after this one. Well, right now, maybe. They're just looking at it from the fantasy perspective. More points for everyone if they win big. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he takes it in for a cold score. A great play there. Touchdown number 15 of the year and second of the game. And the Colts have got it on cruise control. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? will head back out there already in excellent field position thanks to the interception. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Okay, no score on that play, but this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. Second down following the run. Hey, 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 hey. Four down, four down, four down. Four down. Three, eight, eight. 57. Mike, 57. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. And on the ground they go with a running back. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. But it was stopped on that play. We said plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. Time running out here on the play clock. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Time for a break. This one all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. And that is no good. He pulled it just a bit, just a wee bit wide. And now out comes Houston. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's get out of here and do something some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. And on second and 10 now. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catches. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. 
It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Third down and three. Go left, go left. They isolate Hopkins on the left side. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. He's going to let it fly. The pro bowler, DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver. And it's fourth down. They didn't have a ton of yards to pick up on that third down, but there was no way they were playing that one safe. They decided to take that one downtown. They must have felt that they had a big play that was waiting for them. Unfortunately, it was incomplete. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Taken in at the 22. It's a 47-yard punt, but they did give up 10 on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here is Andrew Luck, the focus of our player spotlight. And the deep ball has been his friend, Mr. Davis, and to the tune of the lead right now. And isn't it fun to watch? I mean, I don't care which side you're for. I don't know who you're rooting for, but don't to be see biased. that, listen, I'm trying my best to stay <laughs> neutral, but that is a pretty play. It's similar to going and watching batting practice with a home run hitter, a big-time player, and you just see it happen time and again, and that's what we're seeing in this game. He is rocking and rolling. So are they. Just short of the 45 at the 44. 12 yards on the pickup, and that'll be good for an Indianapolis first. Well, I'd say that runs pretty emblematic of what we've seen all day long. No matter what they've done on offense, this offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage, giving them time to throw it, run it, do whatever they wanted. That's why there are points up on the board. And right now, the psyche of the offense, we're in control. And, we can do and he lost the football. And the Texans scoop it. And they'll set up Shaft right near midfield at the 49-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not only going to tip it, I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations, big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. That throw good for four. It's second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. They'll drop the throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. One final shot. They'll look to throw. He's got time in the pocket. Now a desperation. And this is going to be caught. So it affects the final score, not the outcome, but it is a late touchdown here on the game's final play. And when a Hail Mary is completed for a touchdown pass like that, I think any defensive coordinator just puts their face right into their hands. I don't think there's any doubt about it, and I don't have stats in front of me. I don't have the empirical numbers that say that in recent years, the Hail Mary pass has been completed more than it has been. But it feels that way, doesn't it? And I know the defenses are spending more time on it. I think the biggest mistake they make is that they play everything from behind the receiver. I think they've got to start getting people in front as well to try and knock the ball away. Just a formality now, but here's the extra point. And it's good, but it's also of little consequence as this game is over. 
Well, on the one side, if you try to take away something positive from this game, they played to the final whistle, getting the touchdown there on the last play. But still, all for naught, really. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say give them points for positivity. I like that. That part is good. But I often wonder, when the game is settled and the clock is run out, do we really need to kick the extra point? Oh, yeah. It's, it just, it's silly. It's it, silly. It doesn't make any sense to me. I know that people have explained before, well, you got to play it all the way through. Come on, this thing was done. So for the Colts, a final win here means they'll finish off the regular season at a solid 13-3. And yeah, they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for the Texans, it'll be a 10-loss season as they wrap up 6-10. And, and they'll get the extra week to think about this one as they return to action in two weeks' time. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Colts are winners as we say so long from Indianapolis.